In this lesson, we'll be using the Clausius-Clapeyron equation to determine the heat of vaporization from vapor pressure. The first of two questions reads, the vapor pressure of dichloromethane is measured as a function of temperature and the results shown in the table below are obtained. Determine the heat of vaporization of dichloromethane. So notice that we have a table consisting of two columns. This column tells us the temperature in Kelvin and the second column tells us the vapor pressure in Tor. Now to find the heat of vaporization, you need the slope of the clausius clapeyron equation, which is found by plotting these values. On the x-axis, or the horizontal axis, we'll take the reciprocal of the temperature, so one over each of these numbers, that will serve as our x-coordinate, and for our y-coordinate, we'll take the ln of the pressure, in other words, the natural log of the pressure that we have. So I'll make a note of that, of course, if you have a program like Excel, you can plug this in. And if you do that, you should end up with a figure that looks like this. Take a look at the figure below. Notice that the temperature, the inverse, has been plotted versus the natural log of the pressure. Just to give you an idea, let's pretend that we took the inverse of 200. So I'll go 1 over 200 gives us approximately 0.005. So 0 decimal 0, 0, 0.005, that's the x-coordinate. And the y-coordinate, taking the natural log of that, you can use the function on your calculator, it gives you negative 0 0.223. Negative 0 0.223. Now, of course, you want to maintain significant figures. So rather than having three significant figures, you would stop at negative 0 0.2 in this particular case. And if you look closely, that point right here represents this point. One other observable feature is this line that's crossing through these points. This is referred to as the line of best fit, which Excel can easily add to show the relationship. And from the looks of it, the relationship between the two variables is linear. As a result, the equation of the line is also given. Take a look, this part right here, the one that's being multiplied to the x variable, is the slope and 18.8 is the y-intercept. And you can easily find this by either using Excel's own equation maker, or you can do this yourself by hand using the slope formula, m is equal to, where m represents your slope, y2 minus y1 over x2 minus x1. And as mentioned earlier, the slope is the most important part because it actually relates the heat of vaporization and the gas constant, which you can use to find the heat of vaporization. Here's what I mean. Slope is equal to negative delta HVAP over R, which is a gas constant. The slope that we found was negative 3805 is equal to negative delta HVAP over 8.314 joules per mole times Kelvin. And also the units for the slope is in Kelvin. So by multiplying now both sides by this number, 8.314, the Kelvin units will cancel out. So negative 3805 Kelvin times 8.314 joules per mole times Kelvin. And remember that is equal to negative delta H VAP. So let's use our calculator to plug that in. If you do, you should end up with negative 31634. And since this is negative, you divide both sides by negative 1, or multiply both sides by negative 1, and you should end up with 3163, 31634 joules per mole. Now to maintain the correct number of significant figures, we can stop at four significant figures, and write this down as 3.163 times 10 to the power of 4 joules per mole. Also, you can convert this into kilojoules per mole if you want to represent this smaller. That right there is the heat of vaporization for this molecule. If you want the answer to question number two, make sure you watch question two of this series where we cover the same technique except for a different set of numbers. We'll see you soon.